Hello and welcome to Mad Scientist Network. Today is the start of a brand new Civilization V Brave New World series, and within this game, we will be playing as the Iroquois Civilization, spearheaded by none other than the great Hiawatha. We'll be playing a Pangea type map with standard size, difficulty level, and standard pace. The advanced setup looks like this. Everything is pretty much standard other than the world age, temperature, rainfall, and sea level all being randomized and notably time victory being disabled. I don't view it as a true victory, partly because I don't view the score system as very indicative of what your true score should be. And other than that, quick combat and quick movement will be enabled and that is it. So without further ado, let's hop straight into the game. So I'd like to take this second Let's to thank you very much for tuning in and joining me. America. This in series will be a more analytical, slow-paced take on civilization, Cayuga, so if this sounds like something you would enjoy, I hope you stick around nation, for the remainder of it. At 100 views or 5 likes, I will premiere episode 2, so be sure to hit that like button if you are enjoying what you see so far. That will be the fastest way to earn the episode 2. So I do see some forest here which is good for our unique ability and unique unit and unique building so any any force we can get is only a plus I could settle on this hill and get a forest I could get a plains hill river mountain which could be quite good but I don't see many resources however I would like to but I would miss out on some grassland if I were to move this direction overall though I think it's I think it's worth just settling on spot we will have I'll be able to build some of the wonders like Machu Picchu. So I'm just going to take what the game has given me and enjoy these nice grasslands. So my standard start for Pangea is a scout monument and I will be running with that. I'm going to go pottery here as both of our luxuries require calendar and pottery leads to calendar. I also like to build a shrine very early. Even if I don't found a religion, the shrine is still very helpful for the 7 turns it takes to reduce 7 to 10 turns, usually. So now we should just do some scouting. We'll send our warrior east and our scout west, and hopefully we can get some nice early game exploration. Our unique ability should come into play and help us explore early, because our units move through friendly, friendly forest and jungle as if they were roads. And our unique ability also helps with our economy because we don't have to build roads and roads cost one gold maintenance per turn, so each road we don't have to build we save one gold per turn. It also helps us in that our caravans move faster, so the faster they move the more times we can send them and in turn the more gold we get. So a very good economic and mobility unique ability there. And also, it will generally help us to have a very fast military force. I am planning on pursuing a domination type victory. And let's set this production focus and work these two grasslands for now. Shall have some nice food. I always prioritize food early game so that we can grow and get our cities up as fast as possible. I will probably be looking at a three city he start here since I am going domination. So I'm going for itself. a different victory type, I will often go for four, but three should be sufficient since I will be taking plenty of cities. And we have gotten the best ruin we could possibly get. We have gotten a free technology, and not any free technology, but riding, which will help us keep pace technologically, which is wonderful. We could not have gotten a better ruin there. I'm stoked for that. So now we have to choose our research. And we will grab Calendar here. Well, I doubt we will actually get a worker in that pace, so let's just grab Mining. Because that's generally a good one to have. Uh, but perhaps Animal Husbandry would be better to reveal the horses. So we're going to select Animal Husbandry. That would also give us the option of building a caravan early game if we have a very close by neighbor. We could get extra science boosting as we are on a mortal difficulty level. Need some good exploration in here. We will grow on two turns. Found a ruin. Excellent. So now we should be getting to the point where we need to start considering where our second and third city should be. Quite see enough land yet to start thinking about it. We're continuing to work these grasslands here. Perhaps when I hit top four I will work the incense. 
Uh, but at that point, I'll be preferably building a settler. And we have discovered a crudely drawn map, which is probably the worst ruin, but I guess it makes sense to balance. It'd be, be a rather OP start to get two amazing ruins. And we have met the Netherlands, which is pretty okay. They're, they're an average civ with generally average ratings in terms of diplomacy and how they act, so don't see too much of a threat there. Friendly. They've never Welcome really been a strong AI in week. my experiences. No, Gustav Adolf. But don't get me wrong, they are an excellent uh, user civilization. Great for diplomatic victory. And now we have met Sweden. Sweden could be an excellent declaration of friendship target because we will get a plus 10 great person generation. So hopefully we can try to make buddies with them and perhaps get them to get in kudos with us and declare war on Amsterdam. Amsterdam will most likely be my number one target early game and I can swamp them with Mohawk Warriors, as the Mohawk Warriors require no iron and get a 33% oh, combat bonus in Forest and Jungle. So an excellent unit there. Most people generally view the Iroquois as one of the weaker civilizations. Despite that, I actually view them as quite solid. Definitely not good, but an average civ nonetheless. We've met the Byzantines here, which is another good sieve to meet. They're quite friendly and will often ask for declaration of friendships and just generally be a loyal ally. So, plenty of friendly AI so far, which is good. We do not want to see many threats or many people who will build large militaries. We can plant our monument and now we will go for a shrine and then play it from there. Aloha, so mining in the calendar, we need to look at getting a worker soon. And we have met Polynesia, so greetings, Consul Kamehameha. Or however you say that name, it's a quite confusing name. We can't really do anything trade-wise with them yet, so I'm just going to continue to say goodbye. And I do see a city-state up there, so it's quite exciting. It is a maritime-style city-state, and it has spices and horses. So overall, just a pretty average city-state, nothing special. Nothing to where I would really try hard to pursue an alliance with them. I quite like militaristic city-states as well as mercantile as a, when I'm going for a domination victory, so I will look for those types. And it's getting to about that time where I need to send my warrior back, because I will be getting a worker soon, and I'd hate for my worker to not have any protection, and my city itself to not have any protection. It'd be quite dangerous. So I'm not willing to take that risk, and it seems as though this is the top of the world. So now we need to start sending our scout back. We will be going for a tradition policy here. Tradition is just the safest option. You can never go wrong with tradition, despite it was nerfed um, in the relative past, and not too long ago. It still remains one of the mo most one of the most efficient openers, and probably the most efficient opener. So we've discovered mining, which is excellent. Now we will try to get calendar. So let me go ahead and get in this thing. And let's queue up a worker, because we will be needing a worker directly after our shrine. And then after that, we can look at getting a settler, hopefully. And we might even reach pop 5 before that, so that would be preferable. Perhaps I could send my warrior up there to explore. I think it's worth it. I mean, he can get back in time. It's not a huge deal. And now we need to start sending our scout back to do some more exploration southwest there. A lot of southwest is still in yet. And a warrior has actually come up on our territory. Hopefully the Polynesians will be willing to help us out. It is a little early for an embassy, but since he's so friendly, I think I will accept and get that diplomatic modifier boost with him. I think you get a diplomatic modifier boost. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong there. So there's just too many barbarians. I'm gonna go back because I got nervous. It's just this place is riddled with barbarians. We're gonna take oligarchy here, then we're gonna go for legalism and then decide what, which one of these to take depending on our situation. We will play it by ear there. So we will grow again in four turns. Our shrine will be done next turn. And we will start working on worker, which is greatly needed, so that's wonderful. And calendar will be discovered in six turns, so 
I'd say overall, this is a very solid start. I'm quite happy with it, despite this. Not getting it. Well, I say not getting a lot of jungle or forest, but look at all of this. It's remarkable. So, we need to settle a coastal city here, perhaps, or maybe here, or a city here, perhaps, or just just a ton of options. We can definitely fit in three or four cities if we wanted to. Since there's so much forest, I am going to take drill, and I'm going to put him in my borders and fortify him. Now the worker's coming out in 18 turns, so hopefully that will be enough for us to reach pot 5. Min vän, det är min övertygelse att den uppgörelse kan gagna både mitt Amsterdam. Even though he's my first target, well I suppose it doesn't really matter if I settle that. That's just my first target. I will accept this embassy with Sweden, because he is also very friendly, and I really want to get a declaration of friendship with him, so I'll pretty much do anything he says. Continue to make good progress exploring here. And Onondaga has grown. And we need to be working this. And what if we were to work? And I would be stagnant at that point. So 43 turns to grow. I really don't see much of a point. Let's just let's just work the cattle and continue to grow. So we will grow in the exact same pace it will take us to build a settler. And we have found the best natural wonder in the game, Lake Victoria. Output of six food, which is quite remarkable. If there's any way I can get my hands on it, I'll be able to get it. I'm not being many resources around it. Oh, it's too late, and Zanzibar has expanded to it, but perhaps we could make a raid on Zanzibar. I don't often take city-states. It's a late game, we could make a run for it. As we meet Assyria, the first true warmonger, and he should be a threat early game, but if he doesn't do anything early game, then I'm not too worried about him, but if he starts to go on a rampage, then we really need to take notice. As if it starts snowballing out of control, potentially. No, I say we go for bronze working, reveal where the iron is, and it leads to iron working, which is our unique unit. After bronze working, I will queue up archery, just because it will be needed and necessary. We should consider having at least one coastal city, so that we can send cargo ships. And here's a worker that we could steal. Zanzibar offers uh, two unique luxuries and horses with mercantile, so they are quite good, but it should be a long while before I actually need an alliance with them, so I'm going to steal this worker and then make peace and then send that worker back to my capital. And Theodora, so Ashurbanipal wants to declare war on Theodora. I, considering doing this, um, yeah, this is, this is an interesting predicament, because I would gain a very huge modifier with him, but it's a little too early. I'm going to have to say it's not in my interest. I don't even have a unit besides a warrior, and I would hate for her to come attack me. She is so far away, though, so then again. You know what, guys? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the episode here and give it more time to ponder. So, I'd like to thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, please do remember to leave a like or a comment down below. I'd appreciate any inquiries you have or comments, suggestions, critiques. Anywho, I'm signing out, and I hope you have a great day.